and cold afternoon in February 2015 and um, we haven't been out much and we've been tinkering around in our workshop with electronic stuff and in particular the little ham radio amateur radio project which we haven't done anything about on YouTube so we just thought we'd have a go and show you this little uh, rig we're trying to build because I've just built the first stage and it actually works. Actually I've been at it for a few days now, the weather's been very cold and of course inevitably the bench has got uh, completely cluttered up with stuff. Yeah this is a very simple project and to prototype it it's very common to use a piece of printed circuit board and then you saw up some strips or little blocks of, of PCB and stick it down with super glue. Well we looked online around for quite a long time and we found this website here WA0 India Tango Papa and uh, there's a link from here to a book uh, which is on this site um, written by a guy called Frank Harris uh, K0 India Yankee Echo and uh, really this is a super book that uh, if you're interested in uh, building stuff and, and having simple stuff and having fun it's, it's a fabulous book. Here's a block diagram which we borrowed from the book uh, showing the 40 meter 5 watt low power transmitter in, in a block diagram and um, it does look quite complicated but uh, don't worry because the actual transmitter itself um, consists only of these four modules here. Uh, the others are the you know, ancillary equipment um, and uh, even then if we uh, look at the next diagram it's only these two that we're dealing with uh, in this video, the, uh, the oscillator and the buffer amplifier, so um, it's pretty simple really. And here's a circuit diagram of the, those two sections on the left, the crystal label, the crystal oscillator and the class A buffer amplifier. Well, enough of pictures and diagrams. Um, I built the crystal oscillator as I said and it does work. That was when I thought I'd better make a video of it because uh, quite often things I make don't work. Um, so, uh, well, what about it? Well, here it is and it's uh, idling away. There it is. And uh, it's pretty stable. Yes, the reason it's stable is because it's uh, a relatively unusual circuit uh, recommended by Frank Harris. It's uh, his favourite crystal oscillator circuit. It's known as a butler oscillator which I hadn't come across before but then again what do I know. Um, and it's uh, got a number of features um, which is stability. Uh, and, oh, and I should have said that uh, I'm making this little uh, rig for uh, 14 megs for 20 meters. So um, I realise I should mm, Yes, I, I think I probably should have stuck with 7 megs, which we've got the exact circuit for. Um, so if the uh, 14 meg version doesn't work, uh, then of course this video will never appear on YouTube. And so no one, no one will know, no one will even suspect that I uh, made one and it, <laughs> it didn't work. Well, at the moment we're just shoveling this stuff around. We've got some more strips of... Uh, PCB we've got to decide you know where things go there's actually it appears there's a tremendous amount of room here uh, but in fact this rather nice ceramic um, preset trimmer airspace has got to go there to give us some variation on the crystal frequency as has this little choke but that's not a problem um, so we can't really use much down here we'll, we've got to go more up that way and above all there's another transformer got to go in there so I think we'll make that first and then see how we get on well we've now got to put um, 28 turns on this toroid which is fairly straightforward we just lace it through pull it tight move it up that's uh, boring um, but necessary we've got up to nine turns we need a tap here so when we put it through the next time we leave a loop like that and twist it in the very old traditional way um, and then carry on. So uh, there's your loop, cut the end like that and then with a blade 
uh, preferably one which is slightly past its uh, best, uh, scrape off the enamel. Uh, when complete, you've scraped it all off, uh, just twist it up into an even pair. I've placed three little pads there and of course the three that are close together will be for the transistor which is another 2N3904 uh, which are very cheap, they're only 12 pence each. Uh, that will be where the power will come down via another 100 ohm resistor um, and so it's going to look something like um, transform at the moment looks like a kind of um, disadvantaged starfish but it's sort of going to be there and when we stick these little uh, pieces on PCB of course we're using them um, super glue and we just put a little uh, fillet somewhere like that do it with tweezers because you can press it down and it's almost it is of course practically instantaneous um, and there's another tip yes the tip is as soon as you've used it uh, get some uh, acetone or in this case uh, fin artificial fingernail remover um, onto a uh, tissue and wipe the nozzle it, it, it's a fag but um, they used to say that the people that made the mustard um, made all their money not by the mustard that people ate but by the mustard they left at the, on the side of their plate and if that was true I, was, I don't know whether it was but it, in my opinion it's certainly true that the people that make super glue get, make most of their money out of the glue that you can't get out of the tube because the lid's stuck and you don't want to squeeze it because if it jets out it's very bad stuff um, and so uh, you, you end up throwing it away. Sometimes you can cut one corner off and get a bit more out then the, the next time you cut the other corner off and then the rest of it, the tube, which is often still quite full you can't get at it and it's too dangerous to go poking you can't even move the lid uh, so anyway, I, this tube which I've been using for some time the lid has been on and off I would think 50 or 60 times and uh, even though it was a fag to wipe it with um, acetone uh, it's still up and running well if uh, perchance I look more haggard than I did when I spoke to you in the last scene which was about three hours ago um, th there is a, a very good reason and uh, but first let me tell you that the new stage does work and um, I'll show it to you almost immediately um, but what went wrong in the meantime um, well very briefly uh, it'll amuse you I think because you'll all have been there before you've made the thing and you sort of test it to see if it works and one way of doing that is, is to take uh, you know any old meter that's lying around and you have a, a, a choke and a diode on the back and a piece of wire and you can connect it to something which you suspect may have radio frequency in it it goes it either goes bang or it goes and um, you know it, it's an RF sniffer and they're, they're invaluable actually um, and so I, I tried it and it worked um, then it didn't work oh well, that's funny and I poked around a bit then it worked again uh, and then it stopped working and wouldn't work anymore so we've spent two hours in finding out what was the matter and um, it I suspected eventually you suspect your test instruments there's no choice you know I mean I this thing did work and it stopped so you know but I've checked it 20 times um, so hang, hang on is the meter wrong and that was indeed the case and I thought ah well, it's got, it had a germanium diode in it and I thought well that germanium diode's gone so I replaced it with a 1N4148 for quickness and cheapness uh, and it still didn't work and so I thought well hang on what's the resistance of a 1 millihenry choke and um, the resistance is like 20 ohms uh, so it was this 
Uh, it's succumbed. I mean, I've been using it for all sorts of things over the last couple of years, and I must have, you know, it decided to say bye bye. Um, so when I put, you know, a new one in, um, well, <laughs> it was working all the time. Uh, well, here you see it, it's working. We, we put all the new components in, um, and I'll just turn it up. There it is, it's warbling away very nicely. And um, the only part missing is from there to there, there should be a little um, variable trimmer like that. Uh, and I haven't got any, I'm waiting for them, they'll come tomorrow I hope. So I've just crudely rigged in this external capacitor, and if you look at the meter you'll see that if I tune it, look, wow, it's peaking up very well, the meter's right off the end. So, um, there we are. So that's it for this video. Um, we'll proceed with the other two stages, um, hopefully in an equally successful way. And um, although it's, uh, I mean, I think we deserve a drink. I mean, mind you, it is half past seven. Um, I spent three hours finding out why it didn't work. So, I mean, I should have tweaked it after 10 minutes, really. But I uh, hope you enjoyed it and we'll do some more another time. Bye.